Cheers. <laughs> Go on, boys. Thank you. You ready? Yeah, what's our plan? We always have a plan. No, we don't. <laughs> you, you join us. You tell them. What do we say when we start our videos? Hi, everybody. It's Craft Dad K. A little bit louder, because they're out there. They don't hear us. Is that what you say, though? Yeah. Is the camera... The camera's recording. I know, but is it... This is going to be in the bloopers, I promise. Is it charged or whatever? Yeah, we're, we're live. We're going. Start it off. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Craft Addict K. I'm Carla. And I'm Sam. And this is a channel about cross-stitch. So if you happen to cross this and you don't know what cross-stitch is, feel free to sit and watch and learn. Um, if you know what cross-stitch is and you happen to cross this, I hope you have stitching in your hand, something to drink. I have my tea. It's not coffee this time because it is currently 4 o'clock. So this is my tea I and my water. in my boss cake boss cup I actually got in Hoboken. New York or New Jersey? Yeah, one of those places when we were up visiting our in-laws. So, um, we want to say welcome. If you are returning guests, thank you for spending time with us on your day. Um, and if you are new to us, hopefully you will see something you like. Um, we have a lot today. We have... What day is it? Today is... Oh, sorry. March 1st. Hello. It's March 1st, 2020. And this is our 23rd video. And we are um, excited because we have whips, works in progress. We have FOs, finished objects. And we have an FFO, finally finished object. And I did it. So I'm really excited about that. Um, we wanted to, I, everybody's been watching videos, um, seeing things regarding the Nashville, what's Nashville, what's going on. Um, if you remember, um, if you followed us for a while, you know that Samantha and I are relatively new, new to floss tube, new to Nashville, new to stitching, and we started in October of 2018. So the first February, last February rolls around and everybody's talking about this Nashville. I'm like, what is Nashville? So I asked Samantha today, what I ask you? Do you know what, what Nashville, Nashville is? What is Nashville? It's a city in Tennessee. It's a city in Tennessee. And that's what I thought last year because I really didn't know what Nashville was. So if you don't know what Nashville is, tune in. This is what Nashville is. When you hear it coming from cross stitchers or you hear people talking about Nashville, um, the first week in March, and I'm not sure it's not even the entire week, um, the designers go to a hotel in Nashville, a grand area, my understanding, and it's from seeing pictures post Nashville last year, beautiful. But the only way you get in is to, if you're a shop owner, to purchase at wholesale prices to bring things back to your customers. Um, it's not open to the average Joe, like us. We cannot get into Nashville because we are not shop owners, we're not designers, and you don't. just because you're a designer doesn't mean you get in either, I found out. You have to apply to be accepted to be able to even present at Nashville. So where um, is Nashville? So that, it is in Nashville. Okay. It so is in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so a lot of people were getting prepped and ready. People were putting in pre-orders for the sneak peeks that are out there. So... If you're curious and you're wondering, if you do a YouTube search for Nashville Cross Stitch, you're going to find all kinds of videos um, from Cheryl McKinney last year. I've watched her video. It was her first time going and helping out her shop. Um, it, was, it was amazing to see the video. So I'm really excited to see what videos come out this year now that I know a little bit more about what it is. And I just wanted to share that with you. Um, so... That's that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we're kind of trying to figure out. Okay, so today we went on a road trip. So we went on a breakfast road trip that turned into a lot more. Yes, we went on a breakfast road trip um, to get Denny's breakfast, which, by the way, way the strawberry crepes were delicious, um, and ended up going to Field and Stream and to Barnes and Noble and, you know, to all the things and just got home a little bit ago. Um, so we wanted to talk about Samantha's segment. We haven't had Samantha's segment in a bit. So, Samantha, 
What's new with you? Well, I don't remember much from the last two weeks, I can tell you that much. But I had a friend come over this weekend and we watched old shows on Netflix. Older, child, our childhood shows on Netflix. What's your childhood shows? Give me an example. I'm well, just curious. The one we watched was Love and Maddie, but I mean, we were kind of a little bit older at the time. <laughs> Um, we watched that on Netflix, and we didn't really sew or do crafty stuff, and then Saturday, yesterday was Saturday, we went and met up with a group of friends, and we played Uno and Panera, and ate all types of food, and bread, and it was good. Yes. <laughs> I got to meet a few more Samantha's friends when I went to pick them up, that yeah. looked like they were having a good time. Mm -hmm. And where did I have to pick them up at? At our local Michael's. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm really excited because February is over. And with <laughs> and I know that February sounds is over. funny, but um, February had a lot of things. We'll just say that. So, Cupid. there's a lot of, of the holiday for February. It was Valentine's Day. So, let's start there. So, since our last video, which I believe we taped... Valentine's Day weekend 15th. in there. Um, it was the 15th. Was it the 15th? It so the day after Valentine's was our last video. Uh, we posted a picture of some Valentine's cards that we got in a Valentine card exchange. And then, of course, after the video, we got more. So we're going to insert a picture here. Why did you make that noise? <laughs> I don't know. It just seemed like a good noise. <laughs> we're going to insert the picture here. And that is going to um, show you our gratitude or the Valentine's that we got and that came after our last video. It was really fun. Um, it's the first time we've done anything like this. It was part of the Daily 30 group, which is a closed group right now. Um, so she's not um, accepting new people yet, but when she does, we'll make sure we post. Um, but yeah, she uh, organized all of it and it was fun. And we had fun sending cards out. Um, Stitch and Button, I sent her a little spider valentine. That was fun. Um, she got, she she gave me an ear bending on virtual stitchers um, in the Zoom room, which was fine. It was still fun. Made me laugh. Um, but we got things like stickers and floss and candy. And one of the things I wanted to show, um, this was so cute. And I just wanted to give you an example. So, Violets are blue and roses are red. Place this on the corner of the last page you read. Stitchy friends are great friends. We know that it's true. I'm so glad to have such good friends like you. Happy Valentine's Day 2020 from our friend Lorraine. And this is a bookmark, guys. She made this. And it just hooks over the page. I don't know if you can see that. So you put that over your page and that's your bookmark. So I'm really excited to use it. It looks like a heart and it's got cross stitch. Can you see the, the cross stitch on it? It has cross stitch. Um, so thank you so much, Lorraine. Um, where did it, she did put her card in here? That's the one you picked up that it fell. Oh, I don't know. I get to you. Oh, what did we do? Oh, here it is. Um, because she does have a Instagram and a floss tube. It's Rags to Stitches USA. So check out Lorraine um, and check out her floss tube and her Instagram. Um, I thought that was really cute, so and I wanted to thank her because I've read books, a lot of books, and we're going to do the books at the end. So we do have some books to share, but we're going to wait till the end for that, and we have a giveaway, but that'll be at the very end. So for all those that make it, you're going to know about the giveaway at the very end. So don't fast forward because we might have something important you might want to hear. I doubt it, but, you know, we might. Yeah. So, um, so February... We talked Valentine's Day. I was involved in challenges like you wouldn't believe. And you know, um, she got a lot of stitches in. I did. I got a lot of stitches in. And uh, part of it is semi sane stitching group. And if you're not in that group, I encourage you to join. They do multiple different challenges. You don't have to do them all. I think March they're doing a Jeopardy game or a Wheel of Fortune. I didn't sign up for that one because honestly, 
I need a like a down month for to catch my breath because I've been going really hard in February. My total stitches for February was 17,939 stitches. I was like, what? How did that happen? I'm going to tell you how that happened. Cupid. <laughs> Cupid in the snowball fight. So Semi Sane had a snowball fight for the month of February. And what you did was, if you were hit with a snowball, you had to stitch 100 stitches to warm up. If you were making a snowball, you had to stitch 300 stitches to make a snowball. I made 40 snowballs in the month, you guys, 40 snowballs. You could throw one snowball per person. So I couldn't hit stitching button with 20 snowballs. I could only hit her one per day. Um, but I, if I had two or three snowballs, I could maybe hit Lisa and Vicki and Bethann um, and hit them all up. So there is that. <laughs> Uh, but they could also hit me. So for everybody that hit me, and I think I ended up having 27 snowballs thrown at me, that was 100 stitches to warm up before I could claim my next snowball. So there was that. The other challenge that Semi Sane did congruently, which was a lot of fun, was called Poop or Potion. And that's where Samantha's talking about Cupid really got me. The premise behind Poop or Potion is you stitched as much as you could stitch, and then at 9 o'clock the next morning, Cupid spun a wheel. And when he spun a wheel, a number would come up. So let's just say 250 stitches came up. If I stitched 300 stitches the night before, I was good to go. I didn't have to do anything else, just stitched my day as normal. If I stitched less than 250 stitches, I now had to do 500 stitch penalty in the next 24 hours. So before the next spin, I had to do 500 stitches penalty stitches. Um, and I did have to do penalty stitches a few nights. What if you didn't do um, penalty stitches and then the wheel got spun again? Say that again, but louder, because I couldn't hear you. What would you do if you didn't finish all your penalty stitches and it rolled again the next day? Okay, so my understanding, if you didn't finish your 500 penalty stitches, then the next day, because this did actually happen to Isabel, hey, craft addict, if you haven't seen her, um, she had to make up a song. So there's something that the the, the um, organizers of the event would have you do. And in her case, she had to make a poem or a song or something that related to Valentine's or sweethearts. And, and so then she could have her poop now turned into potion so that it would save her from being flushed away and out of the game. Um, so it was fun. It was fun. So, and it definitely impacted my stitching because my average stitches was 681 stitches, but I did not do that on a weekday to very, very rarely. My weekdays, I don't do as much during the weekdays. I do get heavy stitch time on the weekends typically. Like 400. Something. Yeah, I'm usually right around 400 on a weekday. So I made the rest up on the weekends. Okay, so what did I work on? Do you want me to talk about that or do you want to show what you worked on? Because you didn't do any challenges this month. You didn't stitch a lot, but you <laughs> no. stitched some, and some is better than none. True. I'll show mine. Okay. I worked on my I worked on my seize the day. Uh, I worked on the little jellyfish that's right here. And it's almost over it's almost over. I mean it's almost done. I just didn't do the eyes and I stitched on it what? I don't know. I don't remember. But I stitched on it over one weekend. Okay. And I just didn't finish it. It looks good. And you stitch in hand, too. Mm -hmm. That's why there's so many wrinkles in it, too. So. Yeah, she rolls it up and she stitches in hand, so. Good. You got a lot more to do on it, though. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. That's a little bit obvious. All right. I'm going to try and do this without spilling my drink. Do I want to keep it over here? I'm going to hand you things. So you're, we're going to put Samantha to a little bit of work. Remember, I told you I have a an area that I put everything in until we do our video. Well, we're gonna do that now. So, I'm diving in. Um, and this is in no particular order, it's just in how I have it in here. I probably need the back of that, Samantha, oh, actually. Sorry. So, well, maybe not. That's okay. Um, See, come prepared with a with a drop drop thing, right? All right. So, um, 
I did almost a thousand stitches. This is on my Phantom of the Opera piece. And I know you can't see, but I'll try and zoom in. Um, up here, let's see, right around in here, it starts my first experience with the Treasure Braid. I use that instead of the Krynik. Um, there's actually, this is a quick stitch, and there's another level above that has money falling down. So you'll see there's money in here, there, <laughs> in that area. But I put nearly a thousand stitches on there. Well, oh, where am I going? Here we go. And I think it turn, is turning out really, really pretty. So I'm liking it. I like stitching on it. All right, I'm just going to pass it over. Okay. I'm going to pass things over to you. Here's the bag. This is one of our Gay Run Toten bags. And this is what I put my, um, um, oh my goodness. Phantom of the Opera. My Phantom of the Opera in because it reminds me of traveling. And so that's my Phantom of the Opera bag. Okay. I also started a new start because virtual stitchers on the 29th of the month, all year long, every 29th of the month, because of it being a leap year, we're doing a leap into a new start. So I did start my dressed the monkey, monkey on the toilet. Goodness, you really hold it out like that. I'm well, it's because I'm trying to figure out where the center is. <laughs> okay, so there's my dressed monkey on the toilet. Um, I was actually doing this for a challenge. Um, for daily 30 challenge I needed 600 stitches on it. I did not get 600 stitches, but I got 400. So um, this is where I've made it to. So I've got a little, here we go, the green, a little picture part of the picture frame that was in that. Um, and about 400 stitches. This isn't a very big one. It's nine pages. It is full coverage. I'm doing this on a scroll frame, and this is on 18 count Ada um, that I'm doing this on, and it's all DMC colors that I'm using, but it's the Dress Monkey on the Throne, and it is a pattern I got off of an Etsy shop. Um, if you do a search, you, it'll come up, um, and it only has 37 colors of floss, so, and my needle minder is a poo, poo poo, poop emoji, a poopy emoji. And that is in my monkey bag with the vinyl front that my mom made me. I thought that was fitting. Actually, I just kind of popped it down in there. It doesn't fit with the scroll rods together. So That's a lot of green. That is a lot of green. It does have a lot of green. Um, the other whip that I worked on, and most of these were all for challenges. Once Upon a Fairy Tale, and this is in my purple bag. And... I'm not sure, let me see if it's real easy to figure out. I should total this up before we have, I did 539 stitches on this one since the last time we videoed. Um, if you remember, um, Quirks and Stitches, they do, she does a little notebook and I do the same thing and it actually helps me keep track of how many stitches I do in a month. If I'm looking at something, you know, just for that project, how many was my total stitches on the project. Um, so it is helpful and I do like it. They're relatively, they're inexpensive and whenever I finish a project, I just add another one into the book. Um, this is Once Upon a Fairy Tale, max color and supersized. Um, so you can see a little bit of the castles coming in. We're going to zoom in and we'll put, we'll try and put pictures of where we were the last time so you can see the difference. But, so that's what I did with that. I'm going to give that to you with this. And then my last whip, can you believe it? The last whip. Wow. There, are you sure you got all your whips? That was it. I, I was really focused. I got a couple of finishes, but this is my last whip. So I talked about doing semi-sane and having to do like penalty stitches. Well, this is my walk through the Highlands project. Let me see if I can get, I did pull out of board. I knew I did. One second here. So this is my walk through the highlands. And if you can see the color variance there, that is because those are all solid colors. 
there really isn't any confetti in this and it was easy to get a quick 500 stitches in and that probably accounts for my stitch count being high. In January I did 14,000, a little over 14,000 stitches. So February I did much better but I also did a lot of work on this project in particular. So, and if you want to see the pattern photo, it is, there you go, little girl. Yeah. So I'm up in the sky for her, so there you go, Samantha. And that is all my whips. I'm honestly surprised. That is it. That's all I've worked on in the last two weeks. I have some finishes. Um, so, I'm, I'm thinking, how do we want to go? Do I want to do finishes? Okay, I'll do finishes. So, one of my finishes that I did was Merry Christmas. And I think this is by Cottage House Needleworks. Oh, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, That's a weird noise. Well... And this is a finish. I have not fully finished it yet, but it is a finish. And I used this on a challenge that required two houses. And this had two houses. And I've already got it, the pattern, I'm um, passing the stash on this. I did supplement um, in here. And a while back, I got a gift in the mail from Brandy. Um, and I won't say her last name because I didn't ask her if I could even say her name. Um, Brandy sent me some Victorian motto thread. And I've never used it before. Um, she sent me some reds and some greens. And I was so appreciative of that. And I decided this is the perfect project to try some of that Victoria Motto Red. It's and nice. I used Glory Rose. And I enjoyed stitching with it so much. I, I joined the Fabric of the Month Club for Vic Victorian Motto. And I do have the first um, shipment that I got. Just came um, after our last video. So I'll be sharing, sharing that in haul. But that is because of my friend Brandy sending it to me. And I really liked how nice it stitched up. It really was nice to work with. So. It's a pretty color. It is a very pretty color. So there's this. And this is my, this is that red, the glory red. So is your shoulder snap? I don't know. <laughs> All kinds of stuff snaps on me. I snap and pop. So that's Victorian Motto Glory Red, and it says on the label DMC 321, so it's comparable to that. Very pretty. Okay, so that was a finished object. The other colors, and how many, so here's my trusty book. Um, I had a total of 2,687 stitches. On that, um, and it is Merry Christmas, it is Country Cottage, and I did it on a 32 count fabric flare gray. And that was a piece of gray that I had left from one of Samantha's projects she had been working on. Flare so girl. I started it January 29th and I finished it on February 24th. I actually only stitched on it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days for a total of 2,687 stitches. Provided I didn't frog somewhere in the middle of it or forget to count stitches, which sometimes happens. Um, I really just pulled from stash. Here's the colors um, that I used, and this came from my DMC stash, and I was just looking for different colors that I thought worked well. And I thought those worked well on that fabric flare. So um, these will get fed back into my stash, but look at all the floss I have left. And all of this will go back into my main um, set of floss for the next project that I would need it for. And my book now is now free to use. And I am a, a little hint and tip. I am a, um, what do you call this? Washi tape. Washi tape. <laughs> I'm a washi tape junkie, just so you know. Um, so I, an addict. An addict or whatever. I yeah. see them and like this was on sale. I think I got it for like two or three bucks. So I picked it up. Um, but... I use it to separate my projects and I know there's a lot of light on this and you can't really see but there was a line here because I used this for my pink flamingo the Mill Hill kit that I finished that pink flamingo so then I put a piece of, ta of washi tape across it and then I put my Merry Christmas so now I'll put another piece of washi tape on here and that helps me at a quick glance you can separate your different projects like so now I know that that one's done and then my next one I'm gonna go right in here and put on my next one 
whichever one. And I also write in the front of the book too, in front of the tablet, as to what's in it and when I finished it. So it, at a quick glance, I can see. You didn't write when you finished it. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't. I wrote down when I started it. Whoops. Samantha, she'll bust you out if you don't do it right. She'll make sure you know about it. There you go. Now it's got when I finished it, too. Okay, we good? All right, Samantha, whatever. I was just okay. letting you know. All right, so my other finish was, and this is an FFO I'm really excited about. First FFO in a while. Yeah, really. Um, so here is my tags. So I have thread on my thread drop, okay? Talked about these thread drops in past videos, so I'm not going to get into that. Um, this, if you see this tag I put on here, it's got an and sign. This was like a at a wedding aisle at Michael's, and they had pack of 50 of these for like 25 cents on clearance. And I thought, that's perfect. I can write on it and make it my label for my thread drop ring so I know what it is and then I can keep this at the end and put on whatever I FFO or put it in my book if I do a finished book which I am hoping to do this year um, but this is the anniversary by Lila Studios okay here is oh, that light really shines bright doesn't it I'm sorry for the crinkles um, but here is the pattern. It's the anniversary. It's called the anniversary by Lila Studios. And this was a gift to me from my friend Cindy. Um, and it really was fun to stitch. And there's lots of little things as I was stitching it that I picked up on. Um, and I'll share that with you. But I did this on a 32 count lamb's wool. I started it August 16th, 2019. I finished it February 29th. 2020 and I had a total for February stitches on this 4,311 and that's just February I it seems like I worked on it pretty steady um, until about October 16th and then I didn't touch it for a long time and then in February 15th I picked it up probably for challenges um, I frog somewhere because I wrote frogger on here and this is how I FFO'd it can you see what I see? I'm trying to Let me hold it. get that. There we go. So this is how I FFO'd it. This is a frame that I got at the Goodwill um, a while ago. And I picked it up because I really liked the frame. I thought it was very ornate. Um, and I thought I'll find something eventually that will fit that. And I basically popped out the back and um, mounted this with batting onto the photo boards that people use and glued it and glued that bugger right back in. Had my husband change the hook mechanism. So it was originally supposed to be hung like this with the original project, but I wanted to hang it like this. Wow, he's so, uh, so inventive. He, he set that up for me. I'm really excited. I'm going to find a place to put it. Um, but I put our initials, N and K, with a heart in the middle in the year we were married, 1997, on each corner. But one of the things I said that I would mention to you that I thought when I was doing this pattern is how easily it would be to take pieces of this pattern. You could take this flower basket that's right here with the flowers and just stitch that and make it into a pin cushion. Um, you could do, there's little birds in there you can add to a Halloween piece. Maybe you're into houses and you just want to stitch the house. So there was things that I thought was really easy. And I think that's a Lila Studio thing. Because a lot of her patterns that I have stitched that I really like, it's like you could take pieces of that to create something else. They're like little mini motifs. Like motifs, right. You could do all kinds of things with these. So I thought I really enjoyed stitching it. I was really excited. And I did an FFO. It's not perfect, but it works for me, and it's good enough for me, and I was really excited, and I'm happy Looks with good. it. It looks nice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's no glass on the front. I'm really tickled with it. So, that would be that. There's my finishes, so, okay. I'll look at it more. And, after all of that, all of this floss is left. I used the called for DMC floss. I didn't swap anything out because I'm not a good person about doing that. 
um, but this is all that's left and now this will go back into my stash and I'll put it back in um, into their proper place and then I'll be able to pull it for my next project so great way okay all right and I have another book um I don't remember why I brought that out okay I'm gonna need this Sorry, that's okay okay so that was a lot I hope you're still with us Samantha's yawning. Sorry. Samantha's bored. No. I wanted to talk haul because I do have some haul. And I want you to know, I wasn't feeling real good last week. Um, when you're not feeling good and you start scrolling through some plus twos and you start seeing Nashville's, what's coming out. I was jokingly telling the girls on Virtual Stitchers that I think Teresa Kogut owns half of my wallet. Um, because I did purchase a lot of her um, patterns and her releases. I am going to put the link here for Teresa Kogut's um, floss tube. I think it's interesting to me that she doesn't know how to cross stitch. She does a lot of punch needle. She doesn't know how to cross stitch. She has a desire to learn to cross stitch, but she does beautiful cross stitch patterns. She's an artist through and through, does a lot of painting. Um, she does punch needle work and cross stitch has been her newest endeavor. And I am thinking she really nailed it for the Nashville market. She's got some beautiful, beautiful samplers. Um, I couldn't walk away from, had to get them. Um, they will be on a future haul. Um, <laughs> I might have to sprinkle that out. Um, Lindy Stitches, she's another one that I had to pick up because, you know, I wasn't feeling good. And Mary Mary sang to me. Um, she's got a strut and turkey. Um, so Lindy Stitches, if you haven't seen her, check her out. I'll also put her link. I'm trying to... You're in that bag? Well, I should. should. Um, Teresa Kogut and... and Lindy Stitches, and I'm trying to, because I don't think a lot of people look in the comments, um, so I've noticed that some of our floss tubers are putting it like as a banner, so we're going to try that, so if you see something, we're going to try it, if it doesn't work, we'll put it into the comments below so that you can click on the link, but I'm just going to try and give you what you need to look for. You can edit this video. Exactly. Yeah. You, are you gonna edit this? Sure. Thing? It'll be I, easy, right? I mean, you have to do the last okay. one pretty well. I did. I did do the last one. I'm learning this editing thing. So, all right. So let's talk about haul. So I just did. Oh no. No. Well, how about your haul? You should be pretty excited. You went shopping today. I got a book. <laughs> <laughs> That's my haul. I bought. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury from Barnes & Noble today. I've been wanting to read this book since middle school. Finally caved into my uh, cravings. And I'm excited to read it. I love the feeling of the book. It just... I'm ready. Anyway. So Samantha's an avid reader, if you don't know. She likes reading the books that I've read that we're going to talk about today. She's already got earmarked to put on her bookshelf so that she can read them because she's seen me reading them and thinks they're wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to just go quickly, briefly, quickly through the haul. This is something I picked up. It was $3. Where did I get this? Dollar General. Probably. Dollar General. Probably. Based on the sticker. Gather together with grateful hearts. Oh, wait. Maybe um, it was at Walmart. I feel like we saw that one. And I'm not sure. The whole reason I got it is because it looks like a good size. And really thought I could put my Halloween couple on here. I can frame it up. And this wooden frame be on the outside. And I can tack on my Halloween couple for a Halloween piece. That's why I picked it up. I haven't finished anything yet on it. But I thought for three bucks, why does it have to be expensive? I really try to look for things that aren't expensive. Save money where I can so I can spend money on what I want to spend money on. True. Um, I have um, Beth Twist's Heartstring Samplers. Um, Baby, it's cold outside. outside. Um, this is a memorial piece for Lost and Floss Luann. Um, then, and it's been sparred into... Uh, a stitch along and I haven't started it yet but I want it to be my start soon um, so here is that and I think I'm gonna do mine on a blue fabric but I do like it like a like a I, I, I don't know for some reason blue is calling to me but I'll do floss toss and we'll see it's probably because of um, snowflakes and like winter. yeah so we'll see but that's part of my haul I also have now since I'm in this group 
Um, Victorian motto, so I got some flosses. So, Samantha, I'm going to have you call out the flosses. And I'll hold them up. So, you, okay. you hand them here. This is the Primitive Floss Club. These are limited editions. We got Ocean Cruise. Ocean Cruise. I almost said Cuisine. I mean, I've been good too. Victorian Motto Ocean Cruise. Sweetheart okay. Roses. And these are big skeins, so you know, like here's the loop, and these, but they're, they're big skeins. What's this one? Sweetheart Roses. Sweetheart Roses. Nice cotton candy pink looking thing there. Mm hmm. Green Sampler. Green Sampler. Green Sampler, and it says DMC conversion for $30.52. So some of hers will give you a DMC conversion. These didn't. Not all of them do. Dried peas. Dried peas. Oh. Golden rooster. Ooh, golden rooster. That's a pretty color. This one's like blended or something. Victoria, Victoriana rose. Victoriana. It's got a lot of variegation. It's like, what's it say? Victoriana rose. Yeah. yeah. These are all over dyed, but some of them have more variegation than others. So hopefully you see those pretty colors. Okay, so that's from our primitive selection. And then I also have, because I, I wanted to do some of each, um, because I really don't have any but the ones that Brandy sent me, and you know, she got me, I'm hooked now. I'm a lover of them. So she, I have six. Um, colors from each. So she's got, let's see, Monet Green. Mon Monet Green, oh. I think is how you say that. Okay, well, it's called Monet. <laughs> New Coral Reef. New Coral Reef. Oh, that's pretty. Look I at like that. that. The green. February Special. Oh, that's pretty. February Special. It's got like a tealy green blue. These colors are pretty. Pretty close. I, oh, there went one. <laughs> <laughs> old, Lost one. Old Aztec. With an E at the end. Yep. Old Aztec. Oh, that's pretty. Prairie flower. Ooh, that's a like nice, pretty yellow. And it is a little bit more variegated. There's lights and darker yellows in that. Prairie old flower. Old prim, prim blue. Ooh. Old Prim Blue has um, DMC 311 conversion on that, but isn't that a pretty blue? I'm going to grab that green. Okay. So, boy, those are really pretty. I am really a fan of these flosses. So, Victoria Motto Flosses, Floss, Mo Floss Club of the Month. I'm, I'm a fan. I am definitely a fan. I so, love that green. Yeah, there's, there's some really pretty colors. Put these with the red, and then we have to we have to start incorporating them into some of our projects. Which that's I did order um, something that if you watch my floss storage video that we did, um, I think it's back in the beginning, like five or six. We did a quick um, tutorial on how I store my floss. I've since found something called Annie's Keepers. It's a little bit more pricey. Um, but I wanted to try it out for my specialty flosses and see um, how how I can store a little bit better because I also got some new things from China. I know, right? On um, the CXC floss that I'm trying to figure out because I don't want to mix that in with my DMC. I, I, the thing I have is the Just Cross Stitching Easter Magazine. So I'm on their mail order, so I just get it in the mail. And while I was at Michael's yesterday, picking up Samantha from hanging out with her friends, and after being inspired by doing that one FFO, I decided that, you know what, I need to get a good hot glue gun, because the ones I have are not good, they're broke, the two of them don't work anymore, and one is so clunky and gross, I just, it doesn't work. So, I got a new one with my 40 percent, they had a 40 percent off regular priced item, and 20% off your entire order, and they let me use both coupons. So basically 60% off, how could I go wrong? It's the ultimate glue gun kit. It's an Aileen's glue gun. It comes in a case. It has um, 
power cord. It, it runs off battery and you can charge it. It's got three or four different nozzles for it. So I got that. Bag of glue sticks. Bag of glue sticks. So I'm ready to work on maybe some of my, you know, honestly, if I was doing a sampler, a Hade, Heaven and Earth design, I'm, I'm not going to use hot glue. But if I'm using a Christmas ornament or something that was a quick stitch, I, I don't have a problem using hot glue. If it's good enough for, who is it? You know who I'm talking about. My brain just completely left me. Good enough for who? There's a, there's a mother and daughter that does a floss tube and they do all kinds of finishes and they use hot glue. Mom uses hot glue all the time and I know it. you're saying it to me and you're yelling it at me. Dang if I can't remember right now. Chelsea? Is that right? Oh, all right. You know who we're talking about. You know who we're talking about. Okay. I also have a couple other things I got because Virtual Stitchers has the other half of my wallet. I got a Gingerbread Village from Carolyn Manning's design. I don't know if you can see it. And I don't remember showing this the last time. If I did, I apologize. You're getting it again. But it's Gingerbread Village, and it is. it takes a village collection. If you look that up, and they are by Carolyn Manning Designs. Um, this one has, like, candy canes, and it's got the houses all around it, and it looks like it is going to be a really fun stitch. Um, and the other one that I got, and actually a couple of people in Virtual Stitchers have some of her house patterns. And then when I saw them stitch, I was like, oh man, I really like that. I need to get that. So that's usually what sucks me in. It's kind of like when you go to your LNS and you see the model stitched and then you buy it. Um, I don't have an LNS. So when I'm on Virtual Stitchers and I see something and somebody's stitching it and they show it to us, I'm like, oh, then I want to buy it. So. This is, it takes a village, and this is more just the houses, and, and hopefully trees. Samantha's really good about zooming in. Um, I mean, you mean zooming. You, zooming, right? No, yeah. you said you were going to do this today. You said you were editing. See how that works? Oh, you need, a, you need works. to practice more. You got to practice my editing skills. Okay. Yeah. Well, you guys are doing good. I'm not sure how long this video has been, but you're hanging right in there. Um, so that is all the haul. Y'all, that's the haul. Okay. I'm looking at my trusty notebook, so that's why I'm looking down to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, I do want to take a minute just to give a special floss tube hug out to our friend Ronnie. Um, our thoughts and prayers are with you tomorrow that your test goes well. Um, we want you to know that we are thinking of you. Um, and we hope to hear good news whenever it's all said and done. Um, so... Good luck tomorrow. Um, wish we lived closer. I'd come with chicken noodle soup. <laughs> come take care of you. But we don't live close enough to do that. But I do look forward to seeing you at StitchCon. Mm. Um, we want to talk about... Books. Books. So, um, we are going to do a special giveaway in honor of Ronnie. I don't want to say in honor of Ronnie because it's kind of like... Because Ronnie... Um, we'll just say that because Ronnie is such a giving, wonderful person. Um, when he had his birthday giveaway, birthday sale for the St. Jude's to kind of, he donated everything to St. Jude's. I bought extra because I wanted to be able to do a giveaway on our on our video. And we have a lot of new subscribers. Um, and so um, because I know Ronnie is is dealing with some medical issues right now, I want us all to send our warm thoughts and prayers to him, and I am going to do a giveaway for the bag. This is the small um, bag. It's one of Gayron Tote bags. It's got the hands on it. It's still sealed in the original plastic. I know the inside has happy birthday um, fabric in it, um, but send Ronnie your wishes. Happy good well wishes on Garon Toten Bags um, Floss Tube site, and we'll put that here. Um, and whenever you want to enter the giveaway, don't say giveaway. Um, for this one, we're gonna say, we're gonna say, get well, Ronnie. So the key word is gonna be Ronnie, R-O-N-N-Y. And we will put that in that tab. So 
the key word will be Ronnie for the bag. Okay? Um, the other giveaway that we have that I want to pass the stash on is Star House in the Pines. And this is Star House in the Pines. If you remember, I stitched this. This is a kit in Bixby, designed by Kit and Bixby. It is 79 stitches wide, 144 stitches high. Um, it calls for a 32 count Belfast linen. This is for the pattern only. It is in DMC colors. There are some over dyed threads, but it has the DMC conversion on it. Um, and there's not a lot of threads on here. So if you're interested in this one, you need to use the keyword house in your um, comment below. Keyword house for star house in the pines. Okay. And we're going to do one more giveaway. And the giveaway we're going to do is something that I've had. Still in the original packaging. I haven't taken it out. Um, it is a baby quilt top. It's a stitch and tie. Um, you add fleece to the back. It has a green poly cotton 36 by 42 inch stamped for easy cross stitching quilt panel. Top can easily be tied with fleece back or has you quilting marks which wash out if not used. Um, so it is this green. It has animals. It's got an elephant, a giraffe. Um, what else is on there? Crocodile. Crocodile, a lion. lion. Um, it is stamped cross stitch. I don't know if anybody's ever done it. I picked this up a long time ago. I've had it in my stash. I'm not going to stitch it. I'm not going to open it because I want it to go to the first per the person that wants it. So, if you're interested in this and it is a stamped cross stitch, you need to put the word. Um, it's called zoo animals, actually. So use the word um, zoo in the comments below. So for the zoo animals stamped cross stitch quilt. Okay, I'm writing all that stuff down. Mm -hmm. So that's three giveaways from this video. Do not say the word giveaway. Do not. You must be 18 or older. Yes. <coughs> in order to give us your, um, you must be 18 or older in order to give us your uh, information. Information, thank you. Your mailing information so that I can get this mailed out to you if you're interested. Remember, keyword Ronnie for the bag. House for Star House of the Pines pattern. And, and zoo, zoo for the Zoo Animal Stamped Quilt Top. Um, I like giveaways. I like doing giveaways. Um, I try to use some of my own stash that I can give away because I don't have an LNS. So I use things that I've already stitched or that's things that I've had in my stash that I think it's time to pass along. So we will do the drawing for this, these at the end of March. Um, the end of March? 31st? No. No, I don't, we may do a video, next video, um, but it's not going to be on the next video. We're going to do it at the end of March. Um, the last video we have in March, um, so we're going to say this one's March 1st, whatever the last video of March is. So this is the video number 23. That's where you want to put your comment to be included in that. So the first week of April, because the end of March is in like the middle of the week. Well, the end of March, beginning of April, I'll tell you when we're going to have it. Um, Fine. Comment if you want it. You can comment and tie all three of those words into one and be entered for all three. That's fine. We do the random comment generator to pick our winners. Um, the same person gets picked. Uh, it'll be the first thing you're drawn for. If you're drawn again, it'll. I will do a second drawing because I want to be able to share the share the love and spread spread it out amongst our community. So, um, hopefully, I've answered all those questions. So if you've stuck with us this far, thank you for hanging out with us. We are going to do and talk about our books. And if you're a reader and you want to hang out with us and let us tell you real quickly, no spoilers, we want to tell you about our books. So this is the book hook section of our video and will be the last thing we go over today. That's different. I know book it's hook. different. Book hook. All right, Samantha, let's talk about your books. Well, I'm still reading my Wayward Son book. I, didn't, I don't have it with me. I haven't been able to read it because I'm writing my own book for a class. 
and um, yeah, it's, I'm enjoying that book. But I finished October Sky by Homer Hickam. It's based on true story, true events, but it doesn't feel like it's a true event. Like it feels like it's just like a wondrous story about a bunch of boys making rockets and like trying to get out of this little Colwood town in West Virginia. But it's a really good book. I'm enjoying it a lot. It used to be called. It was originally published. At, uh, under the name of Rocket Boys, but they made a movie called October Sky, but it's the same story. So. Okay. I like that. So, what was your favorite character? Mm, I think I liked Sunny. No, wait, no, I liked. I liked Sunny's mom. Her name was Elsie, and she was very sassy. She added a good flavor to the book. I think. Okay. She's all, yeah. She's so to read you the back of this, it was 1957, the year Sputnik raced across the Appalachian sky and the small town of Colwood, West Virginia was slowly dying. Faced with an uncertain future, Homer Hickman nurtured a dream to send rockets into outer space. The introspective son of the mine superintendent and a mother determined to get him out of Colwood forever, Homer fell in with a group of misfits who learned not only how to turn scraps of metal into sophisticated rockets, but how to sustain their hope in a town that swallowed its men alive. As the boys began to light up the tarry skies with their flaming projectiles and dreams of glory, Colwood and the Hickmans would never be the same. It's Hickams. There's not a double. Oh, Hickams. I'm so sorry. You're right. Hickams would never be the same. Boy, that sounds interesting. It is really good. We had to read it for language arts. Wow, and I think I read Lord of the Rings, so. Why well, have <laughs> Okay. Is that the only book you read? This month, yes. Okay. Besides Wayward Town, but I haven't finished it yet. Okay. So for this month, I read um, Mistress of All Evil. This was the book challenge for um, Magical Stitches. And this is basically the story of Snow White. Yes. Yes. I'm looking to make Wait. sure. Um, Are you sure it's not Sleeping Beauty? Yeah, maybe this isn't the right book. Wait, hold on. Let me see. No, that's not it. This is Maleficent. That's Maleficent. Well, it's not that book. Where is that book? I don't know. Must be downstairs. Sorry. It is the Snow White. Fairest of them all. It's a Snow White book. It's in the same series as this. I have all, all the whole books in the series, so it's the same series as this one. I'll insert a picture here of the actual book that I read. I don't know why I grabbed this one. It must have been in the wrong spot. Did Anyways. You read this stuff? No, I haven't read that one yet. I read um I didn't think that looked right. I read the Snow White version. Mm -hmm. Um Snow White story. Um actually it talks about the evil queen. Um and it's more from her perspective. And it was an interesting read. It was a quick and easy read. So you know it's it's one of those books that you read for a challenge. Um, the other book that I read that oh, somebody on Virtual Stitchers, I think it was EJ from Sunshine Stitchers, said so, The Silent Patient by Michael or Alex Michaelides. I don't know. Michaelides, Michaelides, The Silent Patient. I was actually in Barnes & Noble today and they have this as one of their newer releases, but it's not a new release. Um, I know a lot of Virtual Stitchers are reading this, so I am not going to give any um, spoilers. Spoilers. I am going to say, if you like a psychological thriller um, that's not gory, that is a mystery of a whodunit, you will like this book um, because it keeps you guessing and it is definitely a page turner. And once you start it, you, it's hard to put it down. And the people that are on Virtual Stitchers that have read it agree with me that once they start, they couldn't put it down like they were up reading it. So... She, it was at the point where she questions if she should have. If I read wanted a book. to stitch or read this book. Yeah. So believe me when I say this is an excellent book. And um, once Samantha reads it, maybe we'll offer it as a giveaway. Mm -hmm. But Samantha is like, I want to read that too, Mom. So. Because she like she says, oh, it's so good. My book is so good. So then it's like, really good. how could you? You got to be curious when somebody says that the book is so good. So. It is really good. Never saw the ending coming and at all. And I thought I had it figured out. No, nope, not even close. 
when that prompted me to go to my local library because as I was telling the librarian I really enjoyed this book it was such a good book it's the only one he has it's his first one out his book first release out she recommended a few other books to me so one of them that I picked up and I just finished this today it's called The Girl Who Lived I'm gonna see you like I know the Girl Who Lived, and this is by Christopher Grayson. And I got to tell you, this is a murder mystery. Did not see the ending coming at all. I was sitting in the car wash with my husband. And I'm like, oh my goodness. He's like, really? I'm like, didn't see it coming. Did not see it coming. So, 10 years ago, four people were brutally murdered. One girl lived. No one believes her story. The police think she's crazy. Her therapist thinks she's suicidal. Everyone else thinks she's a dangerous drunk. They're all right, but did she see the killer? So, um, just to give you an idea, as the anniversary of the murders approaches, Faith is released from the psychiatric hospital and yanked back to the last spot on earth she wants to be, her hometown where the slayings took place. Wracked by the lingering echoes of survival's guilt, Faith spirals into a black hole of alcoholism and wanton self-destruction. Finding no solace at the bottom of a bottle, Faith decides to track down her sister's killer and discovers that she's the one being hunted. I'm just going to say, really good book. Go to your local library, go to your local whatever. Book it's store, a page whatever. turner, easy read, really good book. So, the drawback when you have a couple of successions of really good books is that it gets harder to get. Find yeah. books that keep you um, Your entertained. Your expectations become higher. Right. For me, I would give both of those books five stars. For me, if it takes me to the book, I'm living it with the person. I'm not just an observer reading it. That's going to get me right in there. I want to be in the story. Like, when I'm in the story, people can be talking. I hear nothing around me because I am so focused and, and I'm in the story. Yeah, so that happened the car. And, and that definitely happened. Everybody's talking, I'm like, what are you talking about? Because I'm in the story. And to me, that gives you five stars right off the bat. Um, I'm not an observer. I'm part of it. So like that, just wanted to say, if you're looking for a good read, Christopher Grayson, The Girl Who Lived, was a really good read. Um, I think that's it, Samantha. I think. Um, oh, I missed a haul. Sorry guys, I missed a haul, and this is from Stitch and Button. That's the end of look our at books. The, look at the packaging, and it's got, look at Beth Ann. <laughs> it's got the little guy on there. What's that? What's that? Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. Okay. Um, I did get, and I'm going to put, I think I have pictures. If not, I'll take pictures. Um, but they're zipper pulls, and a girl can't have too many. Um, so I got a couple of different zipper pulls and a little M&M buttons. Um, and that's from Stitch and Button. So I thank I you, Vicki. I appreciate it. If you haven't met, if you haven't seen her, she has a floss tube. She's also a floss tuber called Stitch and Button. She also has a Facebook group where you can put me please on her listings and get all these wonderful things. Um, and I don't know if she still has her Etsy shop. I know she did. It was cute and Vicky uh, Etsy shop. I'm not sure if she's still on Etsy or if she's now moved to Floss Tube or um, Facebook for her show. So we did a lot of talking. Yeah. Any? Oh, remember Samantha said she had a friend. Her friend came with is new to cross stitch. We taught her a couple of times that she spent the night. Um, so this time she came with a very special project in mind. Oh, yeah. And she asked me if I could help her FFO it. Um, and it is a Winnie the Pooh that she stitched. She cross-stitched. And she wanted it put on a onesie. Um, for a baby. For a baby for her nephew? Family? I, or I was, was it for some, somebody at church? I think it was somebody at church's kid or something. So somebody at church. So maybe, I don't know. We, we did that. And I took pictures. And we're going to insert those pictures here. She did a really good job. I'm not going to share her name because she's not my child. This one's my child. But she did a really good job, and I'm really proud of her. And I don't know if she watches these videos or not, but I hope she continues to keep stitching. Um, today we went to Field and Stream. Got some pictures of that here at the end of the video. And um, of some different animals that we saw. Hey guys, real quick. Forgot to tell you um, our plans. And... <coughs> 
I don't know if you know Steel City Stitchers. They're a our group of four friends at, out of Pittsburgh, which is local to us, and they're getting together for a stitching day on March 7th, which is this coming Saturday. Yes. Um, so watch their video number 19. It tells you about the details or how to get more details. If you want to come stitch with us, it's $10 for the day, and you bring some food to share um, because we are going to be in... Um, it looks like a, a church kind of area. I'm not sure exactly. But anyways, we will be there on Saturday for a stitching day with the Steel City Stitchers. So we're really excited and to meet some other local stitchers in our area. So I hope that you're able to come join us if you're in the Pittsburgh area. And if you're not, I hope you're stitching. Thanks wherever. for hanging out with us. Hope you made it to the end. Um, and we'll see you next time. Happy stitching. Bye. Bye. Stop the video? I'm not sure which button to put. Hit. <sighs> what does it look like?